Please be aware that this review features images and screenshots instead of gameplay in order to focus more on my voice and the text. Game Description The Vanishing of Ethan Carter Mind-blowing but short. I was waiting for this game to be released since its announcement, having heard so little about it and only watched the teaser trailer. After finally two years, the game is released. The basic premise of the game is that you, the player, are a detective slash paranormal investigator of some sort, and are sent to Red Creek Valley, the location where the game takes place, after receiving a letter from a boy named Ethan Carter asking for your help. The game is played in first person, although it is not an FPS. It is released by the Astronauts, a small game developer company. Story, soundtrack, atmosphere, gameplay, graphics. What I'd like to call as SAG. Soundtrack, atmosphere, and graphics. The first thing you will notice while playing the game is its atmosphere. You will start investigating and exploring a pretty open area as soon as you start the game, and shortly enough, the beauty of the forest you are in, the sun shining, the lake passing by, and the trees singing will all brutally disappear as you come across the first victim covered in blood a few miles or meters away. This transition is wonderfully made and it is effective in creating a detective slash mystery atmosphere. The graphics from the first manuscript will blow you away. The nature, trees, lakes, water, houses, and the general environment look all so great, especially while playing on a PC. You will actually come across different locations, like a cave, a mine, abandoned houses, rail tracks, lakes, forests, mountains, all looking so stunningly beautiful. The music and the sound are also masterfully made, dragging you in from the first moment. Story The game story is surprisingly good. While investigating the murders, you are drawn inside the game and want to find more about what is happening to Ethan. While it may be confusing at some points with the classic adventure game diary pages slash weird texts you find lying around that make no sense at first, it certainly touches an HP Lovecraft level as you will come to witness after you have progressed enough. The different characters, being Ethan's family going crazy after being possessed by who knows what, are easy to distinguish and like or hate. The voice acting is not bad, but it is not great either. Gameplay The gameplay is simple enough and complex at the same time. For story's sake, you have to investigate a crime scene by restoring the piece of it. You do that by recovering lost items lying around in a nearby place and then approaching the body to figure out what happened by opening portals to the time of the murder and arranging the scenes in the correct chronological order. While this may not be a whole lot of gameplay, keep in mind that enemies are not present in the game except from a small portion of it while nearing the end, the true beauty lies at the environment exploration. As the game notifies you when starting a new game, this is not a hand-holding experience. The whole game's premise relies on playing the game on your own, going through the valley and inside the houses, trying to figure out what happened and getting immersed with this universe. Simply walking around, watching and observing the nature of this forgotten place, trying to figure out what happened on your own, is simply amazing. It is like you are actually walking there yourself in real life. Not many games can achieve this kind of realism nowadays. With this said, there are two negatives I found while playing this game. First, you can easily get lost and go further and further ahead without having a clue where you are going or whether you are going the right way because the game gives you but a brief hint of audio cues of where to go next. These are only unlocked by solving the previous murder. While I won't spoil anything for you, the end game actually requires you to have solved all the murders you encountered before you can quote unquote unlock it. Keep this in mind because you can easily lose track of where you are going and end up solving so little and will have to re-walk long distances in order to navigate through the game's large area. So a barrier or notification of some sort should have been into the game in my opinion to notify you that you are changing areas and if you do not finish solving the murder first you would have to re-walk them in order to solve all the murders for end game requirements. The other negative is simply that the game is short. It is so short that even if you explore all the game's locations and solve the murders and get to the ending, it will take you the longest 5-6 to six hours. Keep in mind that I started a second playthrough while mid-game because I did not know where I was going. I was lost. 
I redid all the first half murders, all from scratch, and finished the game, all of this within 5 hours. So yes, you can practically finish the game in some hours. This does not mean that you will not have an amazing experience though. While this game may not be for everyone, it actually involves an amazing story which at first may not be what it seems, along with some card writing elements, reading notes, going through portals and solving murders, it differentiates from other exploration story driven games like Going Home or Dear Esther. Long story short, if you love to experience a story by gradually sinking into the game's universe and by exploring, this is perfect for you. It combines enough gameplay elements so you are not bored. If you were expecting a shooter or some horror game though, do not play this game. This is a pure adventure, story driven exploration game with detective elements added to it that are exceptionally made.